Right, hello, uh, welcome back to another one of my little video tutorials. Today we're going to be talking about object bounds. Um, what are they? How can we use them? Uh, when do they go wrong and what kind of problems that might cause us? Uh, and then how can we fix those problems? So, um, what do I mean when I say object bounds? Well, if we go up to the show tab, down to advanced, um, we can turn on the visualization for bounds. So, um, basically it's a very quick, e easy um, a very simple representation of how big an object is. So if we look here at the sphere, we've got this box around it, so the bounding box is kind of the size that fits around the sphere, uh, and same with our cube here. It's the sort of the smallest shape that's, uh, that contains everything inside it. And, and if you notice, these ones that have been rotated, not duplicated, uh, but these ones that have been rotated have actually um, it changes the bounds, so the bounds always align with the world axes um, so if we rotate the object, the actual bounds of it get bigger. Um, well, what are these useful for? Well, they're very, very simple shapes, aren't they? They're very, very simple representations. And because they're simple, they're really good for doing calculations with, like, for example, um, culling calculations. So, obviously the engine doesn't want to bother spending time rendering something if it's not on screen. Um, and if we look down here, there's a tiny bit of corner of this object but it's almost not on screen at all. If I just move that viewport slightly, you can see that the sphere bounds disappears. So the engine knows it's off screen. I don't need to bother rendering it. How does it know it's off screen? Well, it's checking the bounds against the viewport and it doesn't want to check the whole thing against the viewport. Um, that's going to be expensive. Objects have lots of polys. A cube is literally the simplest object you can get that surrounds an object. Um, and that kind of like makes our, our culling calculations very quick very cheap and easy to do. Um, so yeah, so that's what our bounds are for. Um, checking if we're being on screen and whether we need to be rendered and thought about anymore. Um, Unreal does all of this for you. You don't need to set your bounds up or anything. If you scale your object, that's going to uh, adjust the bounds as well. Um, and obviously as they rotate and everything, this is all, all automatically done for you. Um, so when might things go wrong? Well, if I just assign this material here, um, this is a very simple pulsating material. I've just plugged a, um, a sine wave into the world position offset uh, and I'm multiplying by the vertex normal. So effectively I'm making this sphere or this object grow and shrink. Um, but I'm doing this at the vertex shader position. So if I go back to my object you'll see you get this, this disappearing or this flickering. Um, if you ever see this kind of error this kind of flickering where it's rendered one frame and off the next um, it's very often something to do with the bounds being wrong because the engine thinks it's on screen so it renders it then it realizes it's off screen because it's kind of in front of itself if that makes sense you can see how it's coming outside of its bounds um, and as soon as it's in front of itself it knows or it thinks it shouldn't render it so it doesn't render it and then um, lots of weirdness interacting and things happening there um, so not what we want at all how do we fix it well if we select our object um, and then if I just type in bounds in here to filter this details panel, there's a bound scale. Um, and if we mouse over it, um, obviously it scales the bounds of the object. Um, and it even says it here, this is useful when using world position offset to animate the vertices of an object outside its bounds. So here, if I just plug in something like 3, for example, I've now scaled those bounds manually. And now they're bigger than that object can ever be. If that makes sense. Um, obviously, if I adjusted my parameters in here, I'd have to re-go in and scale my bounds again. But we're no longer in getting that flickering, uh, and we're no longer in getting things curling when it's off screen. There, we're getting that sort of visible where it should be. If I set that back down to one, now it's going to cull, and I should be seeing this pulsating happening in the corner, but I'm not because it's off screen because the object bounds are off screen. Um, what else does it say in this tooltip? Uh, Warning increases the bounds will reduce performance and shadow quality. So there is some um, performance impact um, to this, but obviously that's a lot less uh, impactful than the horrible flickering and things we were getting a minute ago. So, um, so if you're ever doing any kind of like animating materials uh, inside of the of the vertex shader, um, and you're getting those kinds of flickering or that kind of popping off screen on the corners and things, um, then you, you know you can scale up your bounds uh, to cope for it. Um, Cool, that's static meshes, that's the bounds of them. So 
what about particles? Obviously we do lots of particle stuff with VFX. Um, they have bounds as well, just as anything else. Um, if I move this around, you can hopefully see on the video that bounding box, it's rescaling and recalculating. It's dynamically changing. Um, not every frame. Maybe that's just a, a lag in the rendering. Oh, there it goes. Um, so it's, it's recalculating this. Now this is um, what we want, but it's a performance hit. Um, the, the engine's having to recalculate this bounding box every frame, regardless of, uh, of whether the particles are actually moving and things. So there's a little bit of optimization we can do with this, where if we go into our particle editor, and this is just a really simple, this is literally just the default particle. Um, so I've not made any other changes to this yet. Um, we can see our bounds. Here we are. And you can see it adjusting slightly. Um, there's an option. If I click on my background, come down here, to my sort of particle system settings, I've got a fixed relative bounding box. If I turn that on, hopefully, if I zoom in, we might be able to see there's a tiny little bounds in here. So the default values are very low, which is why we're getting this tiny little bob, this little um, like indicator there. But what would have happened now if I move this off screen? You'll get your particles disappearing. Might have seen this happen in in video games. It's quite a common problem. Um, the engine thinks it's off screen. It thinks I don't need to render that. I'll just not bother. Save myself some performance. Well, in this case, that's not right. It is on screen. We do need that. So rather than using uh, a very small box, I could go in and make my box bigger. And hopefully, you can see that's starting to to fit. But actually, and it's pretty good. Next to our our bounds display option or button, there's this pull down, and there's a little button that says set fixed bounds. And that will turn on the fixed bounding box, and it will set the uh, the size of it. It will calculate how big it needs to be. And now, oh, if I just move this to refresh the viewport, there it is. Um, that's not recalculating, so this is now a cheaper particle system than it was before. Not by a huge amount, but every little helps when it comes to performance. Um, there are some issues with this. It's not a perfect solution. That's why it's not enabled automatically. Um, if I move my object. You can see the particles are trailing outside of the bounds. Well, what happens if I move it off screen? There's that pop again. So, anything that's going to be kind of like doing a lot of movement, it's attached to a character, something like that, that's not going to work because you're going to get this popping issue that I'm having now. Um, but there's plenty of things that would work for this. So, a little fire, it's going to be quite self contained. It's either in a campfire or a fireplace or something like that. Uh, we could set the fit bounds on it. You know, it's going to be that big. It's never going to get any bigger than that. Um, save ourselves some performance. A uh, few other things to watch with this. If we uh, set our bounds like this now, and then we go in and say, oh, actually, let's make our particles live a bit longer. Um, well, you can see here, some of those particles are now living outside of the bounds. So if I go up and then they're going to pop up again. So when you see this in happening in games, this is probably what's happened. Someone's set the bounds and then they've edited the particle to live a bit longer. Um, and now suddenly they're uh, they're, they're clipping out um, and then popping off when the viewport sort of culls them. Um, last little thing, if I turn off my fixed bounds, just reset that back to being dynamic. If I try to use a GPU sprite, so you can see there's no bounds visible, uh, and it says here, warning: this system has no fixed bounding box and contains a GPU emitter. So, so what's happening here? Well, the the calculations for how big those bounds are is all done on the CPU. If we're using a GPU emitter, then there's no information that goes back from our GPU to our CPU, so it can't calculate these bounds at all, um, and we're getting get that same popping issue. Um, very common for GPU sprites um, because it doesn't have any information; it can't calculate that bounding box. So. Um, if we tell it to calculate a bounding box, what happens? Uh, well, it gives us a box, but it gives us the wrong size and shape, doesn't it? Again, the CPU doesn't know where these particles are. It can't do that calculation for us. So, what we can do is a bit of a, a sort of hacky workflow. If we delete our GPU sprites, um, our GPU module, set the bounds, and then put that GPU module back, we should get a pretty good approximation. Um, you might need to scale it up ever so slightly. Um, so um, that will make sure that our GPU particles are, are always going to be uh, within a box that contains them. Um, you're not going to get any popping as these things are off screen. Uh, and yeah, that's what bounds are.
what they do, how they work, some common problems with them, uh, and how we can fix them. Um, does that work? No. So you can't use your scale on a particle system. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that has fixed a few issues. Uh, if you ever see kind of particle popping, um, anything like that where it pops off at the edge of the screen, or whether you get that kind of flickering, very common to be um, something to do with the bounds. So turn them on, have a preview, see what's going on, uh, and then just scale them up to suit. Um, could be a bit long-winded, but um, a bit of a hacky thing. But it works and gives you uh, well stops that error from occurring. So um, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, hopefully you learned a few things. Um, as always, any questions, comments, etc., um, let me know, and I will see you all next time.